Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about WhatsApp. So basically we chat uh, with different people, we chat in groups on WhatsApp. WhatsApp is the, I would say the most used chat platform. Like there are different other chat platforms which are now also coming like Signal etc. But WhatsApp has been uh, one of the most widely used. So even it has like 100 billion messages which are being transferred on the WhatsApp servers every day. So it's worthwhile, I thought, to have a system design video about how the WhatsApp would be handling these chat messages. Also, WhatsApp has a lot of other features. We won't be going into them. We would just be talking about chat today, like how WhatsApp chat works. So basically, WhatsApp is basically an Android app which runs on your mobile phone. Now, you would have also seen that there are some messages which are stored on your mobile also. So how does that happen? So that happened with the help of a SQLite database, which is there on every phone. It is kind of, uh, you can access it using, like when you're developing an Android app, you can make it keeping in keeping it in mind. So uh, it stores those messages locally on that SQLite database. Now WhatsApp uses an XMPP protocol, which is used for transferring of chat messages. Now we will come to talk about why only XMPP, why not any other uh, protocol, why not HTTP, why not any other protocol is being used, why do we want it to use this. And uh, this, uh, the connection uh, which is maintained between the server and the client that happens through a SSL socket. Now why this SSL socket is required, why cannot we directly make a call to the server whenever we want to send a message. And why cannot the server directly send us a message? Why do we have to maintain or open a socket and not just directly, you know, call the server to get the message and to send the message? So we'll talk about all of this. So this SSL socket, so suppose these are various different clients which are connected to various different WhatsApp servers. So mind this, different is very important because there is not just one WhatsApp server. There are multiple WhatsApp servers. So each client can be connected to a different WhatsApp server. It is also possible that all of these clients are connected to just one WhatsApp server. Now these people are trying to talk to each other and the messages are obviously transferring through the WhatsApp servers. Now how these messages uh, get transferred? So basically SSL socket means that a connection is maintained between the servers and your client device. And it supports a two-way communication. Now, what do we mean by two-way communication? Now, suppose if the communication was one way, that means only you can send the message to the server. And how will you receive the message? To receive the message, you would have to keep on asking the server that did you get a message? Did you get a message? So this is kind of called HTTP long poly. So we do not want to depend on it. Why we do not want to depend on it? Because it is costly, as you can see. It would require a lot of your mobile resources. It would also require a lot of time but we are here looking for a real time solution. We want to see the chat messages in real time. So therefore we need a two way communication channel. Now we have established this, that we need a two way communication channel and this connection has to be established. It should not break. So suppose you're chat chatting to people and again and again, your phone has to create a connection with the server that will also be very costly. So therefore this connection has to be maintained. So, that's where SSL socket comes into place. Now, what does this SSL means? SSL basically means secure socket layer. So whatever messages that are being transferred from your client device to the server or through the server to your client device, they are all encrypted. So that's where SSL comes into place. So what happens is that you send a message to the WhatsApp server through this SSL socket through XMPP protocol. Now, how does this XMPP protocol comes into place? I will also talk about that. So the, uh, the messages are stored in the queue in the server. So basically you send the message and the message is stored in the queue. You don't need to care about it, that it has been received or not. You will get the tick, which you get the blue ticks, which are quite famous. So whenever your messages has been de delivered to this queue, you'll get a single tick that your messages has been delivered to the WhatsApp server. Now when WhatsApp server delivers this message to the person you are sending, that also in itself is a complex topic. Like how does WhatsApp server know which client to connect, which person to send? That we'll talk about later in this video. But let's suppose it is doing it is it has to send to the person. 
then whenever it sends to the person, it then sends back you another message that the message has been delivered and the blue tick appears. So this, as you will see that this is a kind of two-way communication. The a communication between the server and the client, the server can also push the message. The client itself can also push the message. So both can talk to each other. There is not just one party. Whereas what happens in an HTTP protocol? Now what happens is that you make a call and only the client can make a call and it can get a response. It is not like that server can make a client call and then something happens. So that's why we, we need a XMPP protocol which supports this two-way communication and also the real-time delivery of chat messages. Real-time is very important because you are talking to the same person. You don't want the messages to appear one hour later. Now, why is socket needed? So that I already talked about two-way communication, send and receive messages. XMPP protocol I also talked about. It helps to send and receive messages in your real-time, which is a quite important caveat in whenever you are designing a chat system. And underlying it uses TCP. Now, why is TCP required? Uh, like if you have seen my previous videos, uh, uh, I have talked about in the streaming video, like why TCP and uh, like the differences between TCP and UDP and where do we use UDP, like in which application we can use UDP and in which application we have to use TCP. So in this application, we have to use TCP. Then but why do we have to use TCP? We want to use TCP that we want to make sure that the message has been delivered. We cannot, we cannot let the messages fall off. Like we cannot let any packets be lost. We want the messages to be delivered. Therefore, TCP is required. And that's why XMPP was built over it also. Now, uh, there are a large number of concurrent users which are always connected to WhatsApp. So therefore, it has to use a programming language that supports it. So WhatsApp basically uses Erlang our lang is uh, mostly uh, is a language which which provides a lot of concurrency so it can support a large number of users even discord uses our lang uh, they use a framework built over our language called elixir which is used by discord so therefore uh, uh, that's how it is able to support uh, these number of users because it has the processes which require concurrency between different users on a single server because it is possible that there are multiple users connected to the same server. So there is a lot of concurrency involved in that. Now we come to the issues part. So like I discussed about the issue, how will the server know that on which server the person you are sending message to is connected? So suppose you are this person P1 and you are connected to this box one and you want to send this message to P6. Now, how will you send this message from P1 to P6? Which because the P6 is connected to box 3. So the box 1 actually has to know that the person you are sending message to is connected to box 3. Now, how will this happen? We have to basically store a mapping table. So we store a, there is a mapping table which is stored between the server ID or you can see a box ID and between the user ID. So whenever a person sends a message to any box, that box also has access to this mapping table and this mapping table is then used to get the ID of that particular user to which you are sending the message. Then this message is transferred to that box, which will then transfer it to the finally receiver. And then it will finally send back the status message that the message has been sent. And therefore box, you would also have to look up the sender box from where the message had come. So that's where this mapping table comes into place. Now this mapping table also has to be synchronized over multiple servers because you cannot just depend on a database because it has to happen in real time. This should be fairly fast and for this we need caching. So this table has to be cached on each of the server. So suppose a new, a new, a new person comes in, it joins a P6, a box 3. So let's call it P7. Now all other boxes should also able to, should also be able to know that this P7 has joined box 3. Now box 3 in itself would change but it itself also has to send the updates to other boxes. Now who will do this job? This job is basically would be done by some synchronization service which will help to keep this mapping consistent across all the server boxes. Now in this there is another issue. There are too many connections. Now like suppose there are 
millions of users which are connected to now the servers would always be finite it cannot be infinite number of servers now millions of users connected to these servers they are sending messages to each other so there are too much too many number of connections so uh, and this mapping has also been maintained so think of how big this mapping table would be how would you maintain the synchronization between different servers you would have to kind of have an approach such that you can limit this number of uh, connections so for that we would kind of need a session service now this session service what it will do it will help to maintain this mapping also and also keep it synchronized also we would also have to terminate some connection so we would have to terminate a connection when it has been idle for a lot of time so you would have seen this when you are using whatsapp also that if you are not using whatsapp for uh, a fairly large amount of time sometimes it is possible that when you open your whatsapp then only the messages arrive and not you don't get the notification sometimes so that happens when this connection has been closed now if the whatsapp has to send you a notification that a message has arrived it has to open a connection with you and if uh, so that's why uh, sometimes you see that you are not getting messages but whenever you switch on your phone uh, you get uh, start getting the messages <clears throat> so uh, now i also talked about how will the person receive the messages so suppose i am the receiver i i won't have to continuously call the server that have i got the message have i got the message the server itself can push to me that you have got a message from this person so that's why we need an xmpp protocol http protocol won't work because like i discussed we need a client server kind of relationship the client has to ask for something to get a response therefore the xmpp protocol that we discussed so that's how a basic chat application you can build and uh, this chat happens now in this chat also there are various number of features which we have not discussed like things like read receipts and that itself is a big thing to consider how would you maintain read receipts especially in groups so suppose there are 200 groups and billions of messages coming in the uh, chat window how would you store that how many people have read, read those messages uh so that's again a great problem to think and solve so i would like you to research on it and think about how read receipt would be solved for the whatsapp uh, uh or any other app uh so to limit the scope of this video so this was all for today i hope you liked the video and you got a basic idea of how a basic chat application functions and uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below and i'll see you in the next one